Hello, everyone. Hope you are well on this Sunday morning. I'm going to start off with a quote, and it goes like this. Don't just teach your children to read. Teach them to question what they read. Teach them to question everything. That is from the late George Carlin, who's a comedian. Very wise man as well. I'm questioning a lot of things these days, and I think we need to keep in mind, and I think we need to urge those close to us to think for themselves, question things that they read. It's okay to do that. It's okay to ask questions. I think we need to prepare like our life depends on it, like never before. And that means more than just rice and beans. The polls closed, what, almost five days ago? Five days, more than that, actually. But they're still counting votes. Right, right, okay. I question that. I think we have a right to question that. I think it's absolutely ridiculous. I think it's unexcusable. I have much stronger words that I won't use. How will the people respond? How will, how will the people respond to this? It's a slow roll. And we know what's going to happen, don't we? They're saying that the Senate uh, will remain in control of the Democratic Party. Uh, the House is still, uh, from what I've read just this morning, the House is still a toss-up. But we know what's going to happen because we know we've seen the story before. We've seen it happen before. We know what happens, don't we? Something's way off. And I think we know what it is. I think we need to define, I think we need to know the definition of a vote. I think we need to know the definition and, and you know, when, when do we vote? What day do we vote? When does it, when, when does it close? When, uh, you know, once upon a time you had to present yourself in person Show your ID. I mean, I have to show my ID to get certain decongestants at the pharmacy. I have to show my ID for that. I have to show my ID to get a library card. I have to show your ID for a lot of things. To get a personal protection tool, you have to show your ID and undergo a background check. Done that before, too. But what is a vote? What is a legal what is it? Is it a mail-in ballot? Hmm. Prepare life like your life depends on it, because it just might. And I think, like I said, it, it means a lot more than just beans, rice, and water talk about that a lot, but we need to prepare mentally, spiritually, physically, in many ways. The road ahead is not going to be easy. We can contemplate all we want about how, how did that happen? How did, how did things happen in this world today? You know, we can't explain it. Uh, the only way that I can explain it is that I think there's a a great deception going on, and uh, I think it's demonic, personally, in my opinion. I think it's evil. Uh, I think uh, I think it's ramped up quite a bit. Although we can look at history and see similar things, but this one. This one is not just one country, it's not just one region, it's not just one continent, it is global in nature. No denying that. 
It's very coordinated. I think the person or forces behind it are have not revealed themselves, have not are not in the uh, are not in the public eye. It's just a, a feeling I have. There's so much going on. There's so many stories that come out. There's so many opinions and clips and videos and such. We need to stay grounded. And uh, we need to, to just uh, remain focused on our household, ourselves, like I said, spiritually, physically, mentally. Quick note, take a quick sidetrack here. I read a story just a while ago talking about things that are unreal, hard to believe, but everybody's talking about the U.S. United States diesel shortage. Read an article about how U.S. companies are exporting more diesel, more and more. Uh, they're, export, they're exporting more than a million barrels a day of distillates. Why? The short and simple answer is companies are making more money doing this than selling it to U.S. consumers. Yet we talk about a diesel shortage. Makes no sense to me. Talk about self-inflicted. And I've said before other times that we are a country, and even if you just look at all of North America, and even including Mexico in that, we have an abundance of natural resources here. An abundance. And, and you know, uh, there's no excuse why we can't be self-sufficient, independent, energy independent, resources independent, you name it. No excuse. So, there's that. But, like I said, we must, I believe we have a deception going on and uh, a, lot of, a lot of good people are under it. We need to guard against that. Like I said, we need to question uh, what we hear, what we see. We need to stay grounded in the Word, uh, in the Bible. That is truth, and we know that's truth. We know without a, without a doubt that that does not change, it doesn't alter, it doesn't get amended. It is timeless. We need to prepare, like I said, our families, our, our, our households um, for what is coming, what is happening currently. We need to insulate ourselves and our households the best we can in preparation that look a little different for everybody because some folks have been doing this for such a long time, they're really ready and they just kind of update. But I think we need to, to look, take a hard, honest look at what we have and what we have done, our skills. And that's just not, not just means stuff you have in your pantry, but your skills. We all need to work on now. There are things we can all improve on. What can you do today? What can you do? What can you do? And don't put pressure on yourself and stress out about it. But what can you do this week? What can you do this upcoming week? Whether that's a skill, whether that's a knowledge you can pick up, whether that's picking up some books on some things so you don't have to rely on the internet. Maybe the, what if the internet goes down? When and if uh, we lose something like that or technology, or even for a temporary, uh, you know, even temporarily. You know, what can you pick up that you can uh, learn, that you can use later if you need to? You can use now, actually. Just think about these things. Like I said, the road is not easy. The head is not easy. We need to keep praying. Uh, prepare to stand your ground. I have a good passage I'm going to share here in a little while. But we need to stand firm. Uh, we need to uh, be uh, be prepared to rebuke, be prepared for the arrows, so to speak, because they are coming, they are coming now, and it will increase, it will ramp up, okay? 
It is written that it will, and it is. Before I go into this passage, uh, I also encourage you during these or after these videos to read through the comments. There's a lot of awesome comments. I learn a lot from the comments on my own videos. There's a lot of wisdom in there, and there's a lot of experience in there. Um, there's humor. There's a lot of great information. There's a lot of encouragement because people, when they have questions, they throw it out there. If you have a question, you throw it out there. I don't know the answer to it all. I mean, I may have an opinion. I may know the answer, but if I don't know, then I know somebody else is going to answer and, and pick it up, pick the ball up, and they run with it, and they always do. So, so do look at the comments. Read through them. If you have a certain question, if you're not sure about something, comment and ask. And you'll, 99 times out of 100, you're going to get an answer, and it's going to help, hopefully. It will help you. I believe it will. Passage for today is, come back to Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 6. Now, bear with me. This is not just one verse. This is a passage. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18 says, let's talk about the armor of God. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when that day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm. Then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, which with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Aren't they coming? Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Amen. We can learn a lot from passages, can't we? Interesting how we can read something so timeless and it applies to right here today. It's amazing, isn't it? it? Happens every time. Every time I read this passage, I learn something new. Let's stay aware. Let's keep preparing. God bless you. See you soon.